I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint daffodils easily, even if you're a new artist. And that is really my intention. Like if I can go forward and have anything happen with this lesson is that it becomes a lesson where people are like, I wanted to paint daffodils and you showed me how I could do it. And I love it so much. And I put it on my wall. That's the goal for today. And to help me reach that goal, that very, very lofty goal is my husband, John. Hello. Hey, baby. John is over here at the fabulous cockpit. And what he's going to do is he's going to help me keep that promise that I just made to you by taking, how many cameras do we have? Uh, how many? Three over there now. Three over There's there. Three, over, three in that studio. Okay. Three cameras that are robotic to zoom in, to go around and make sure that you can see every technique I'm explaining or teaching. He's going to make sure you see every color mix. He's going to make sure you see everything that you need to know. I'm going to tell you the materials that I'm using. And I, and I'm going to tell you in a way that like you don't have to worry about the brand I have, right? I, I want you guys to kind of maybe move beyond the brand where you're not as worried about the brand, but more worried about the quality of the product and why that product is worth your time. Does that make sense? It does. All right. I'm kind of jazzed for today. Let's sip Are some you? coffee. Sip. Oh, I have coffee? Sippy, sippy. Sippy, sip. I mean, not to graveyard girl out, but what was that? Did you <laughs> sounded like, you know, you attack the coffee, like monster. And I can do it too. Sorry, SMR people. See, there you go. That's the no kid. Childishness. See, I'm on, I'm, I'm in the radio chair, so they can't actually see me drink. So unless I. <laughs> if you only knew what was happening in the radio chair. <laughs> I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. John considers a win if he doesn't have to put on hard pants. So today, we're going to break this lesson down in steps. Mm -hmm. The steps will be time stamped after the show. If you're not familiar with this, what that does is that if you look at any of my videos from this year, you can actually scroll over the play bar and it'll tell you what step and what technique you're working on. There's also a matching copy of that in the description. And then a week to two weeks out from this video, I'm going to release a written out instruction manual, like a mini book that you could print out to help you. So, you know, if you find this video uh, through the YouTube time portal, I'm coming through the YouTube time portal. Why am I a wicked witch coming I through? You? I like the wicked witch. It's Let's just show. be honest. I do her voice because honestly, she's super fun. <laughs> but it's probably not a weird affinity to have but she's a hoot right like do you do you ever just kind of root a little bit for the stylish bad guy where you're like i bet there's a backstory there's a backstory here because she's got some fabulous shoes all right um guess what <laughs> to that end to those instructions check the description if you don't draw don't worry I, actually with all my videos all 13 1500 of them whatever we have now if you don't draw don't worry there's a traceable for that yeah. You can print it out and use it to transfer the image on your canvas. And no, it's not cheating. It's just a technique. They teach it in art school. I don't know why it's ever a drama. It's a silly drama. <laughs> but we got to give people something, right? Mm -hmm. This is the week of silly dramas anyways. Um, 16 by 20 canvas. You could paint on multimedia paper, anything that you have. I'm just letting you know what I'm using. This is a stretch canvas, 16 by 20. I think it's an artist loft. I like to put wishes and intentions. And if you follow me on Twitter or my personal page on Facebook, this wish will make some context for you. This is specifically for my son, but anybody going through this support information, relief and transition to lucid dreaming from those that are suffering from sleep paralysis and night terrors. Mm -hmm. So like I suffered from these as a kid um, into my young twenties, they are very intense. And my son is part of the 8% of the population that also suffers from that. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going through teaching him. I'm so I'm excited to be able to do this because I did not have that help as a kid. And so, you know, I, we had to go through the sort of organic explanations that people try to put through all the stuff that's happening. And there wasn't an internet, so you could look it up. So people were just guessing and thank goodness we eventually got to a psychiatrist who knew what it was. Um, but I'm able to help my son get through that. So if you are going through that or you have a kid going through that, I wish those things for you. And by the way, look it up because the information out there is really helpful and it will normalize your experience and help take the fear out of it. So that's my wish for today. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start out with phthalo blue and titanium white paint. But if you want to know all the materials that we might be using in today's show, check the description down below. 
Sometimes I use less and I amend the uh, description at the end of the live video. Because, hmm. you know, sometimes Accuracy. I find I'm just more brilliant and I didn't need all the colors I thought I needed. You needed to, you didn't need them all. I did not need them all. They sometimes, were like Pokemon and I didn't need to catch them all. And sometimes you're like, oh, I needed zinc white. But we're not using it this year. So one of the big changes of 2021 is I stabilized the uh, palette. That's true, you did. Which means I was able to do a studio setup, and I'm now I was able to do 403 color recipes. We just dropped that video I saw. that relates to these, and we're writing up that instruction manual right now, so that a new artist could just buy these colors and make 403 very important essential colors. That's a lot of colors. I'm gonna have to watch that video. <sighs> I mean, I could have done more too. I could have done more colors. I was actually kind of like, I didn't do any tertiary. So I was like, I don't know. Yeah. So there. What, did you cover like later, reds and stuff? Later we're going to do how many colors, unique colors, can I mix with those colors? And it's going to be some astronomical number that I'm not going to get to. It's certainly going to be more than 100 layers. But today. Um, hmm? But today, to today. Today I'm just going to use blue and white, and you're going to put up a step one. <gasps> Am I? Mm -hmm. is, that what, is that what I'm doing? Some That's magic the button. job, right? That is the job. Step one for you all right so in step one i need to put in this sky and as part of this i want everyone to be able to paint it kind of mandate i'm going to take a large synthetic brush okay okay now the numbers on the brush as i can tell it to you it's a number 30 it's a ruby satin bright what you need to know is that it's a bright which means the length of the filament out is short and the filaments what it's made of isn't real hair it isn't hog bristles it's synthetic and it's stiff. That's all you oh. need to know. And you can get those kinds of brushes from very inexpensive to expensive brushes. Okay? Mm. But those are the qualities that you are looking for. Many varieties. I'm brush. going to not dip my brush in my coffee to start it. <laughs> that almost happened. Again. I'm going to prime my brush in water. It's a cup of water. I'm going to drag off the extra, right, as you might. And I'm going to begin with loading up some white onto my brush. And you'll notice that what I do is I flip the brush over. See me flipping it over? I do. That loads paint into the belly of the brush. And I'm going to start the lower half of my surface painting back and forth white. And you're going to say to yourself, why? Because <laughs> it's already white. Why would you do that? Because I am priming up my canvas for the gradation I'm about to do. And this method I found helps beginners get it more accurately. So I have from the halfway point to the bottom, a wet, thin layer of white paint. I'm going to come over with the corner of my brush and get just a smidge of my phthalo blue and add that into my white paint here and then come from the bottom and paint a very light sky. So listen, guys, there's a lot of greenery down here. We just want when the leaves peak up, we just want a light blue showing through. That's why we go to the treble. You know, sometimes you got to go to the treble. As you go up, you add more blue to the brush. Working the edges. And then I'll blend down into where the paint is still wet. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. The trick is not to let your paint dry on you before you add the next segment. So I'll get a little more water into my brush. Not too much, right? If you're having trouble with just getting your brush to load and paint right, I actually have a video for that, and no, you are not alone. <laughs> That's actually one of the first things, were first challenges. The first challenges that you as a beginning, maybe new artist has to face, and we have some help for that. So do not feel frustrated. Do not despair. We have a video for that. I should like make a mug. We have a video for that. <laughs> it's easier to find videos I haven't done than videos I have. Sometimes I even revisit them because I think of a new way to teach a concept. Because that's all you do. Yeah. It's fun. That's what I do. I teach art online and I think about it all the time because that is what I do. I'm going to go over my words. I've got a pretty... It's not a pure phthalo blue. It does have a little white in it, but this is my darkest phthalo. That's a, that's a big canvas. 
as Sabana it is. says. She's it is. Like, I, that's why I pick a bigger brush. Sometimes when the canvas is bigger, <clears throat> it's nice to have a big brush. Because what if you have to do a big area and all you had was a brush that was, say, this size? That would be a you'd be little a very, while. You'd be a very tired little artist, wouldn't you? These are both brights, right? They're both brights. Okay. They're both synthetic. They both have good flick. Uh, this is a 30. This is a 16. They have two different size handles. All that being the same, the only part that matters is this business part. And this would take a long time to paint the canvas with. Now, there's there's no, like, there's there's nothing about, like, the width of your brush stroke means that you're, like, an artist. or and There's nothing weird like that. that no. Means. No. You know what means you're an artist? Hmm. You painted really seriously. Um, you know, I think sometimes people mix up working artist, right? Commercial artist or uh, presentation artist or licensed artist or show artist for being an artist. Those are types of artists. But anybody who paints a painting is an artist. You've probably been an artist since you were a kid. You just forgot about it. Mm. Or somebody told you you weren't and you in a moment of rare insanity, decided to believe them. <laughs> right? How often in your life has a stranger told you something when you were small that you just decided to adopt as true and then never reevaluated? I challenge you today to think about those things that maybe you've adopted as true about yourself that could have just been an adult talking to a child and the child interpreting it and taking it to heart. That's the thing that happens. It is. The thing that I talk to people about a lot. So this is pretty great, right? We've got this, but you know what this is? It's a little streaky, huh. right? Why is that? I, well, that's because Thalo is uh, kind of a thin paint. It's a transparent paint. We just brushed it out. It's the first coat. A lot of people will leave you here because it'll look fine on camera, but I know for a fact that your canvas at home is having a moment. So what we're going to do is we are going to dry this and do a second coat. Okay. This is a two coat technique. Two coat. Two coat. If you want your painting at home to look amazing. All right. Yeah. And so really it's just about making sure you thoroughly dry that surface between your layers. And uh, it really makes a big difference. This, if you don't use heat and just make sure you thoroughly dry, the, your surface won't be sticky. Um, heat can make it a little sticky, and if it's not thoroughly dry, it can be a little sticky. So when you drag your brush across the surface, it can drag, and sometimes it can even lift that paint that isn't fully cured to the surface. So it's good to just take a little extra pass back and forth to make sure it's all dried on there, and you can see her touching it to make sure that that's thoroughly on there. That's a just a a thing you'll get used to as you paint a bit more. Just talking to them about... Just talking. Just talking. Just talking. Sharing things. Stuff. Telling secrets. We we have the... Whatever he said, it's not While true. You're Away Club, where we talk about secret stuff. That's okay. I accept it. While well, I'm away. The force is strong with me. It's true. Yeah. There's heat talk. Uh, yeah. Heat talk? Heat talk. <gasps> Oh, it's okay at home. Don't worry. So we're going to do this second coat. Um, and I'm going to say this to you, not just on my channel, anywhere that you're doing, if you're doing this type of gradated technique, even if they don't show it, if you look at your canvas and you see yours is streaky, dry it and do the second coat. Mm -hmm. All right. Just dry it and do the second coat. Because you, what you want is a nice blended gradation. It's probably what you were hoping for. And this is how you get there. We're going to do coat two. I'm going to get my, wait, Warren Wells, I'm going to get my brush wet again. Same brush, right? Now, I don't have to just do white at first on the bottom. And the reason is, is because I already have a nice kind of coat of paint. So I'm going to go across, and you can see that I am having an easier time even painting over the canvas. And that's because gesso tends to be a bit thirsty. That's the preparation most canvases are treated with when they go out of the little factory. Um, that's so you don't have to gesso them. And it's a little thirsty, so it can resist a little bit of paint. The second coat, you'll find you're having an easier time with. I'm going to put out a little more white and then uh, keep going before it dries. So you'll see me being a little bit urgent here, but not because this is an anxious part of the painting. 
but because I am in a dry room and stuff dries a little quicker on me than it might for you at home. So you can see I mix that next value. Isn't that much nicer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is just something that, you know what, your first day painting, if you know about this, you'll get a better result. And my goal, as we stated in the beginning of the video, is to create a beloved daffodil painting. Well, the only way that's going to happen is if I help you guys make paintings that you feel super good about, right? Got to get that blue sky in the background. Right. The one that you imagined in your mind before you got the paint out. And there is one. There nope. is always, I'm going to come to the top with a slightly stronger blue and blend down. There's always a painting we have in our mind before we start, before we pick up a brush, one we hope to do, a feeling we hope to have. So I try to help you guys get there. I've got a, a just bit of blending a these areas together. And you can see this is a much smoother. So in golf, they talk about like visualizing, hitting the ball into the hole, like yes. making a hole in one. So do you like visualize your painting before you paint it? I often walk through uh, the steps of painting it. And yeah, I do, actually. Hmm. I do. Um, I, I, I paint at night. Interesting. While I'm laying down to go to sleep, I work on paintings at night. Go through their processes, lay out the paint. I got a little, you know how people are like, I have a man palace, and in my man palace, there's a hundred thousand dollars, and because of that, I'm so small to GGC, and you will never remember everything I remember. Okay, so what I took from that. <laughs> <laughs> I, look. <laughs> my parents did a lot of help, self help stuff. So <laughs> I have some feelings that built up about the mind palace. Anyways. I said, I don't really want a palace with a bunch of doors where I'm storing stuff so I can remember everything on the planet. What I need is my mind studio. So I have a mind studio. It's very small. It's quite modest. It's got a door and a window, but the views are nice. <laughs> and it's always clean, and I go in there and I paint at night. <laughs> Things you now know about me that you didn't know before the video. Interesting. Hit that subscribe button because I'm so cool. <laughs> Just because you know that about me now. It's true. No, I'm just kidding. Um, not about the subscribe. You should totally do that because I teach art for free several times a week for years. So you probably would like that. Free art lessons let you buy more art supplies. I'm going to rinse out my brush. Be sure to always rinse out your brushes. And we're going to call this done. And so you can see there is some character to it. There is some like personality to the sky. But you'll know that your sky stopped being streaky because your brain won't say to you, it's so streaky, hmm. when your brain is still screaming, it's so streaky. So now you got to take a, I got to, I think them? I should dry it and then we should do step two. All right. Or we do step two dry and we dry it. it. I don't know, but we're going dry, on to step two. Dry, definitely dry it. Definitely. It'll photograph better it, if it's it, dry, it guys. Yeah. And then I can show you my next trick. The next trick. So I've, I'm out of tricks. We talked about drawing. So, ooh, if you guys look at the link in the description down below, you can find information out about mini books. Mini books? What are mini books, you say? Mini books are the things that Cinnamon writes so that she can help you guys be more successful at these types of paintings. So they generally take a little while to get done, but they come along afterwards, and there's links to them down below, and you can download them for free and print them out and stuff for you to help and there's links to other information down there and there she is and i'm back from and outer I, space what we'll do is dun, i will dun, 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 dun. the soundtrack in my head <laughs> someone got coffee i did have coffee all morning all day do you know what you need to do hmm. tell them about step two I'm going to tell you guys about step two. So John's going to take a picture of this. What, what I'm going to do, is, this is important. Pay attention. Lean in. i tell you secrets. So step two is going to be an optional step. If you have never painted a cloud before and you're just really concerned about the outcome of this painting, observe step two, but don't worry about participating in it um, because your daffodils will look beautiful over a cloudless sky, right? Um, and clouds can really mess first-time painters up. 
uh, if you painted with me like 20 or 30 paintings and you're kind of getting your cloud techniques down and you've got a couple good cloud brushes in your bucket, I'm going to show you how to do these light and airy clouds. Sometimes in a lesson, there are elements where as a first time painter, maybe you don't want to do this technique yet because it's never been introduced to you before. Or if you've been painting for a little bit, you are ready. You've got the tools, you've got the mindset. It is on, right? Mm -hmm. And that's okay. So step two optional step never painted before never painted cloud maybe you want to observe the technique and just go on to the daffodils ready for it come paint with me all right so i'm going to show you something very important show me <laughs> brandless brushes right see these yes same <laughs> <laughs> and what it is is the hog round um and you can see it's about the size of my thumb I could tell you it's these are generally about a 12, but that's only in this line because there's no universal sizing, right? Now I'm working on a brandless brush guide, so you guys can be free from this and I can be free from this, but right here, that's about your size relationship, okay? And you're gonna take one of these hog. These can be anywhere from $3 to 80, big range. I think this is like, this is closer to that high mark and I don't have any of the low mark here, but I have this one that I've had since time began. This brush is sold, right? And notice that it's not particularly neat or pretty, and sometimes the uh, hog hairs can come out, right? Especially as I wet it, some of them will flare out. All you got to do is roll it or reshape it as you paint. Here we go. Just getting the brush primed in water, as we do. Drag off the extra. If you're worried about bristles, you can roll it or shape it. I'm going to come in here and get a little bit of my white. I want to make sure it's not too wet, so I've got a little towel. And we're going to come here very lightly. Touch. I want to pull off a little even extra moisture. Hog can hold a lot of moisture. It's a wonderful brush to use. Right now what I'm doing is just sort of painting an irregular Little line. See that irregular little line? Mm -hmm. It goes up and down. It's a hot mess. It's so weird. I wipe out my brush in my towel and come here and do a little kind of half circle tappy stroke. Take this back a bit. Wipe out if you need to. And again, you can see what I'm saying. Like, if it's your first time painting, this is a lot to take in. Watch, observe. You know uh, those really cool birds that use tools, and they they make little saw blades and can get all kinds of weird bugs in the uh, the rainforest. John, mm -hmm. they watch for a while <laughs> huh. before they try to make the tool, and and we can do that too. We can learn from those smart smart little birds mm -hmm. because we're trying to make a little bit of an interesting cloud that's maybe forming up here. I'm gonna come right here and get a little. Paint, I'm gonna put it through my brush. Let's come here. This one's a little bit drier. Like it better. I'm going to just kind of dry brush and wiggle in a bit of a cloud. The trick to remember about the clouds is on these, your brighter, whiter edge will be here on the outside edge, and then as the cloud goes back into the sky, it should blend back. If you're a first time painter and you didn't listen to my advice about waiting mm -hmm. and you realize right now at this moment, maybe you should have, you just paint the background again and catch back up with this. It's always good to try. Clouds when they're up high can be very light and airy. So I'm just trying to make sure I make regular shapes. I may even come here a bit kind of regular this out a bit mm -hmm. hog brush rye brushing light values some edges we're learning about it i'm here this is like some of my favorite i'm gonna make some wispies sometimes clouds have little wispy friends don't they if you have too little moisture you can go get some on your brush and then you just see where you're at when you come here. Oh, okay, cool. 
make some brighter white edges. I mean, those weird little cloud shapes. So I'm trying to make sure that there's some shading or valuation in the clouds. The other way I can do that is to come in and mix in some blue. And forcibly bring it there. So you can put stuff back if you feel like you lost it and your cloud got too serious. Always step back whenever you're doing sky and kind of look at what you have. I can take a not completely white. This is just really a stiff, bristly brush. This is a hog bristle. But if you don't it's, have a hog, it's just... If you don't have a hog, you, so my thing is, is if you don't have the tool um, and you're not familiar with doing a lot of cloud techniques, I have a lot of cloud techniques and there mm. are a lot of brushes. And I'm doing a special video about all the ways that I paint cl clouds with all the brushes coming up Thursday because of this question. Right? Yeah. Yes, you can paint it with another brush. You can paint clouds with your finger. You can paint clouds, clouds with a sponge. There are a lot of ways. Right? But, but they all require their own practice. Their own processing. And they got to practice. Practice, 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 practice. Practice, practice, practice. Someday I'm going to run a cloud clinic. So it's good to, you know, like, if you go to our website and click on the videos, you can go, you can type in clouds and there's a bunch in there. Yeah, I have a, I have a how to paint, like, I have like a 15 minute video, of like what not to do and do when you're painting clouds and it uses a different brush. Mm -hmm. uh, I have sunsets, I've got long cloud videos, I've got old cloud videos that I wish I had not made. I've got, <laughs> uh, I'm just bringing some blue in while we're clouding up our sky. And nice, nice beginnings of daffodils. Not death. Oh dear. Let's see, just bringing this here. Right? So there's a plethora of videos for you. Mm -hmm. If you just want to paint along today and you're not familiar with this technique and you don't have the tool and you don't want to watch another video, just do blue sky because it won't hurt your painting. Your painting will still be beautiful. But these have been optional clouds. Right? Well, I tend not to. Sometimes on a reference, if I've got it on the reference, I like to demo it because people were like, well, I showed up to learn how to do those little weird wispy sunny day clouds. Well, there you go. We right. And so I'm showing you guys some wispy sunny day clouds. Now I've just got, if you'll notice, look at this. What I gotta do is go, bip, bip, bip. here's my hot mess brush. Hairs are coming out every which way. It's a hot mess. We don't mind because I just put the paint on the little edge of the brush here. And we actually want that. That um, little variance is what I was hoping for. Notice I'm just sort of wiggling that around here. Mm -hmm. That's how you get there. And that's kind of a lovely little bit. So clouds have uh, little narrative moments that occur in them. And it's real fun to find them and play with them. And they can seem like such complicated creatures. But really what they are is a wild hot mess. You just got to tame the mess. Tame the mess. Tame the mess. And make sure you're getting different values. So you notice that I'm pushing up the values. You could do this with a bright. You could do it with a fan brush. You could do it with your finger. You just have to practice the, the principles of it. Mm. But you don't have to do it today on this painting. It's not required. I'm taking a little bit of this until it's a little too watery. And this is what I mean. You are not stuck ever. Rinse my brush out a bit. I'm going to wipe it off in a towel. All right, that kind of re-pulls the hairs and bristles back in. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get some white on the tip here and piece out some little bits of bright brightness. It's not everywhere. 
It's just giving my, my sky some definition that maybe it didn't have a minute ago. So if you were ever wondering how you got that kind of bright day, light cloud, distant effect, this is a way to do it. It is not, my friends, the only way. It is the way we are demoing today. There is always another way to do something. Maybe a little playful, but you know, that's what art is for. <laughs> Be playful. And, and I use this brush because it's one of my oldest brushes. You can see it's all cracked. I don't know. I've had it. I don't really, I'm sure more than 12 years. I don't know how many years I've had it. Mm. And um, it, it is not, you know, a neat and tidy brush. Never throw out your hot mess brushes. Just feel like you've got the opportunity to play here. And then I'm going to stand back and look, but I feel like... That is the sky I was looking for. That All really right. is great. Let's take that picture. And again, first time painting. Nothing wrong with leaving it blue. It's still pretty. Nobody, I'm not going to tell anyone in your family, a friend group, or a place that you're sharing this, that there were supposed to be clouds. I'm not going to. I'm not going to bring it up. You don't bring it up. I'm not going to bring it up. <laughs> so remember, these are your paintings, and it's okay to edit for the skill place that you're at if you're brand new and you're like man I'm just trying to figure out what dry brushing is which end of the brush is what she means by toe like you're trying to figure out terms you're trying to figure out first concepts it's okay to edit out something that feels a little challenging especially if I the instructor lets you know where you can make that edit right because it's your painting it's your painting time it's your painting experience and you're not doing this to be stressed maybe you are but that would be very unique and I would not have heard of it before this moment um <laughs> like if somebody writes me in the comments I am painting to be stressed you will be unique for me and I will have not heard of you before this moment <laughs> okay so we've got a cloud a uh, little sky that we're pretty happy with and we're going to start putting in our little daffodils I have some fun daffodil techniques to share with you that are a little easier than maybe what you've run into out there but I've got to um, put in a basis for them to build up from. So the next thing that I've got to do is I'm going to put out my phthalo green, right? Phthalo green yeah. and burnt sienna right here. Phthalo green and burnt sienna. I'm going to push my sleeves up before I end up getting in a hot mess. And I'm going to grab my big brush that I had earlier out just because it's big. I will get fresh water, right? So this is where my water is at. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go fresh just because there's a lot of pigment in that water and I don't want that pigment to get into the next part. I'm going to take my green to my brown and we're gonna say about, about this much of the painting, lower third, and I'll give you an exact measurement with a ruler at the end here, needs to be a dark brown. For those who are precision ground oriented? Well, sometimes that little bit of information can help somebody feel just a little more confident in their choice because one of the biggest things you guys struggle with when you're new is believing that what you're doing is okay. Hmm. It all feels so new and so strange and unusual. I'm flicking this up. That Notice this sense. is also very streaky, not uncommon. They look green, they look blue, but streaky. But what we want it is to be deep. Because if you'll look between the daffodils, look between the daffodils. Wasn't there a really funny singer who had a crazy voice that used to sing about daffodils? He was like, all the daffodils, all the daffodils. Remember him? Mm, no. He had curly hair. Maybe. Anybody know? Curly hair and he had a ukulele. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're talking about, uh, is his name Timmy? What was his name? The internet will tell us. I never worry yeah. about not knowing anything anymore on my YouTube show because I know the internet will tell me. He was an actual music outsider. Yes. He just genuine. Like, I, I only reason why I know is because I did that <laughs> research on outsider music. I had been talking about outsider art to John, and then he discovered there was outsider music, and that fascinated him. And so he did a bunch of research on it. I'm just bringing that over here. I'm avoiding the white, if you'll notice, because I don't want this to be creamy. I want this to be dark, and I'm coming through and putting a fairly decent amount. You'll notice I'm kind of flicking up and letting 
these lines being even, it's because, you know, when we put Tiny, in... Yeah. Everyone erupted. Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Yeah, I wanted to say that's what it was, but, you know, if you, you don't want to misspeak on certain things. Because... Ah, people misspeak all the time on the internet. I've decided it doesn't matter anymore. I worry. <laughs> no, I... I'm actually pretty careful with my uh, instruction and any information you need to, to be on, but I don't mind when I'm not an expert in something. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. It was tiptoe through the tulips. That's right. Tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> <laughs> See? It stuck with me. All right. Now, we're going to call this a step, and I'm going to measure this for you so you know. On this side, right? on this side, we went up about four inches. And on this side, it was about two. Four yeah. inches, two inches. Don't know the metric conversion for that. <laughs> I wish I did. I'm sorry. My kids are good at metric. Yeah. I am not. They also do new math, which means I cannot. I, I could barely have helped them with old math. Why did they change the math? I barely figured that out the first time. And then they're like, there's new math. And then they send home homework. For, teachers, I love you. I bless you. You know we all love you. But you do now send home homework to the parents because none of us know the new math. And then I find myself on like Khan Academy and Kumon and all these places trying to watch videos because my littlest is like, do you know how to do this? And then I start to like carry the one and change them and they're like that's wrong you can't no and they my kids panic because i clearly don't know what i'm doing for what they need <laughs> while i'm doing this can you microwave my coffee <laughs> sure all right <sighs> so now we need to put up some leaves and a few stems these are very dark this is early days okay not a lot of pressure on yourself. You don't have to, you know, be hard on yourself. I am going to use my number eight cat's tongue. This literally is an art strip of brush, but I don't want you to worry about the brand. You could use a round. You could use, like, here's a round. Like, this would be fine. So something about in this size range, this is a pointed filbert, sometimes called a cat's tongue. A regular filbert just doesn't have the point and would work here. This is a round. You just want it in that size range. So you're not working so hard for the, brush, for the brush stroke. I almost said the brush stroke, but this isn't a swimming show, so that wouldn't have been as helpful information for you, would it, in any way. So we're going to be working on uh, these little blades and these strokes. And I've taught this a lot. We're going to talk a little bit about how hard you're pressing on your brush. Because if you're pressing very hard on your brush, your stroke won't taper. And you're going to want to go from firmer pressure to a light pressure. Whatever brush you're using, it isn't really going to matter. It's about how you lighten it up when you come through. And I'm going to wait for John until he gets back because I want to be able to show you on the palette how we do it. Not that you haven't figured out this green. If you want to know more about color mixing, please watch the 403 mix video. Uh, we're working on making more resources for you around that to make it easier. Um, I know it's long and it's a big one, but... It's chaptered, so you can just go to the color you are looking for. So all the droids are always the droids you're looking for. No Jedi will be able to throw you off your path. There you go. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gonna get my brush wet, and I'm gonna also make these fairly dark green. I'm gonna come here on the toe of my brush, very lightly. And then as I bring it down, you'll notice that I press harder on the stroke. And we're gonna do this sort of through here. I'm so glad I put the base on. Yeah. Notice that I'm making sure that some of my blades are going different directions. My leaves. Why don't you make them all go the same way, like the wind's blowing them or something? Well, because the wind isn't. <laughs> oh. And also this helps them feel, because um, the natural. wind isn't. It does help them feel more natural. Now, we're not going to paint every single blade in detail. Some of these are far away. Some of these are not in detail. Um, some of these are in the background. So we're building up stuff. 
as we go, we can put up like say uh, longer ones. Like one could be here. Mm -hmm. Those can face the opposite way. This is a nice meditative practice to do. So you could breathe in, breathe out, place a grass blade. I can go through this a lot faster than I am, but I know some of you are following along exactly because I met you and I know how you are. Hmm. And when you're new, especially, you're like, I'm going to do exactly that stroke. No. By the way, <laughs> some of you guys are so good at painting right now and and getting to the painting that I did that sometimes you'll put something up and I'll be like did they just reshare my painting and I have to like really like compare like some minuscule element of the painting <laughs> right and go oh no 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 they redid it right uh, like and I had to talk my mom through that she'll be like this, this happened I'm like no 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 that's a whole new one look at the stripes mm -hmm. you guys are so good you guys are amazing So for you, fantastic rave juggernauts, you wonderful souls, you kind people who follow along and trust me to get you through this painting, I'm going to take this down to a slightly slower pace. Beginners have to be the bravest. Beginners have to be the bravest and they're the best. They are because when, you'll never be a beginner again, right? There's that first sort of journey of beginner it's somewhere between 20 and 50 paintings when you're really really a beginner and that's a special time of course you much like being 16 one never appreciates it <laughs> and if you are 16 right now no you don't you think you do but you don't no you might you might this generation is um pretty spectacular hmm. but i really love the current generation very much i think they're amazing people I think they are so much more smart and savvy than any generation before them and having to work on things that kids have never had to face or deal with. I mean, I remember when I was a girl and we were all shocked at what a nuclear bomb might do. Mm -hmm. How scary that was. How people were like crying after the day after. My mom, you know, hiding under desks for bomb raids. Right. So, you know, kids now, that's like nothing to them. That's like, of course, yeah, nuclear bombs, total problem, you know. And they can tell you stuff about payloads and everything. They know things we never knew. And they're aware of problems and facing them in a way that we never could. And I just think they're amazing. Yeah, me too. Can I just say ditto? Ditto, yeah. Just say ditto if you agree. <laughs> With daffodils, it's, I think it's important to cross the streams. <laughs> Boy, or our lazy 80s references did They're not lazy. The I worked for these. Oh, no. I well, went I mean, to the movies. I stood in line. I worked for these. I mean, I think Ditto was the best thing. Because I remember it was like somebody would say a whole bunch of stuff. You just go, Ditto. Yeah, ditto. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it was such a... I, I'm not really copping out, but I am, you know, I'm not, I'm not fully ejected from this conversation, but enough to. Sometimes, you know, it was said well. It's true. Right? So that one got a little wet there in the stroke, so I'm going to come back over it. If, you're, if your brush stroke is a little wet, the paint can kind of pull back, so you just come back over it. Don't worry about it. A little much, a little too much water in it. This isn't too bad, right? Mm -hmm. It's important to make things that are taller and shorter and that there's variance. You'll need it later. All right. 
that is that step. Mm -hmm. And that's look, and what you're looking for, but John can put up the step, but what I'm going to say you're looking for is I really want you to look at the way that the strokes are curved both towards the right and left, the way that the lengths of the stroke are short and longer, and the way that the stroke is a little bit thinner as it tapers and then thickens as it approaches the ground. Those are the things that you're working at. Gotcha. You don't have to be perfect, though. All right. Don't don't put yourself under the perfect pressure. Nobody needs that. I will give this to John. I'm not going to dry it because I don't mind if some of this green is wet for the next part. And you might be like, but what about the stems? We'll get to them in a second. And I have some really cool um, things that I'm going to show you that you probably have not noticed about daffodils that will make painting them so much easier. I went and looked to see what was out there and some very complicated, um, wonderful daffodil lessons out. But I think you guys are going to really appreciate this more direct path into the flower. You know, there's certainly you can get right on into the oil painting of it, but this I think you're going to love. Now for this next part, I'm going to put out some yellow. Cadmium yellow medium. And I'm going to drop the cap. And then I'm going to find it, and John's not going to tell on me. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I dropped the cap. I know. I saw. Did you see it? On all the cameras that on I On every camera? But Except for the one that I showed them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just putting out a little more paint because I know this is going to take a second. I'm sure I'm going to use some of the white. Um, this is one of the first color mixes on the 403 video just to talk about. So, and then I have all the other greens. If you have a different set of colors, I have other greens. Mm. Now we want to put some light, right? Cause the sun is out. It's a beautiful day. You can feel the breeze. It's just perfect. I'm going to take a little of my brown, a little of my green, mixing it a little more to the green and I'm going to add some yellow. I'm going to come to my stems. These not stems, leaves. And I'm going to add some of this. I don't want to take out all my dark value. Right? We're just creating some dimensionality using color. That seems important. It's so important. I can bring some extra little stems back here. You can start to increase the number that are around. We're just starting to make some depth. Again, don't take out all of the dark color because the dark color is important to what you're doing. If you want a particular stem to see more in front, not stem, leaf, you want to make sure that that stroke is the long unbroken one so that the broken one automatically falls behind. Pull this down. Oh, I cannot wait to see your paintings from this. I think you guys are going to do so good. Remember, it's a little bit of your burnt sienna, phthalo green, and cad yellow. Mm -hmm. You can see sometimes I'll like kind of twist and turn and make some personality. I do. That's okay too. Leaves often have personality. When I have this run in, I'm going to come in and take some green and yellow, less brown, and I'm going to make some big strokes in this low area. Maybe they come up a little bit higher, but we're just making sure that there's some depth. See the depth? A little green and some yellow. We're not painting out all the dark green. We're just making sure that what we have here 
And if you want to get a little green brown, you can. That this has some strong, deep value in it. Coming through here purposefully, calmly, sometimes more brown and green, sometimes a little phthalo green and yellow so that the green has its different values and feelings. We don't want to hurt the green's feelings. But what we do want to make sure is that our canvas has a nice depth. This is a for you at home thing. Because again, looks amazing on the camera, always. Like even when a painting is a hot mess, looks amazing on a camera. Mm. So even better in a thumbnail. That being said, we need you guys to have a great painting at home. Let's call this a step. I, want, I don't want to get so far ahead of you guys or have you guys get so lost in a painting that you can't get back to a technique or a layer that you need. So that's why we break down sometimes these steps into like what seems like similar areas. Um, but what that's about is that I'm trying to think about how many layers, how many mixes, how many brush strokes that you as a new painter can take on in a given step, right? And um, not just overwhelm you with so much information that it's like, it's great information. Uh, and I love that you guys can pause and rewind me. That's like the best feature of YouTube, but also not just not overwhelming you with the full thing because it can get quite overwhelming. Now, interestingly enough, I may, uh, I'm going to look at this real quick. You look at it. Oh, it looks really nice. I'm very happy. I'm going to get a little of my yellow and my green. It's quite bright, isn't it? And I'll come here with this lighter yellow. You can even get a little white into it. Making little bright, cheerful edges. Do you see these bright, cheerful edges? You can bring these down now into some of the more forward-facing spaces because they would be, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. What's so wonderful about daffodils is that they are like nature's way of singing. Well, I guess birds are nature's way of singing, but visually singing. They, they tell you a story of happiness. Birds really carry up. a long stroke down through there. And then when we've carried that long stroke down through there, let's add a little white. That, see how we're just doing some of them. Finding those bright spots, those little moments. Birds don't have the exclusive on singing. In they nature. don't. They don't. Lots of things sing. But I realize, you know, nature has animals. So I guess visual singing, the color of it just mm -hmm. vibrates into the world. So I'm taking my yellow into my phthalo green and I'm making these bright, bright colors. And then if I want to, you know, really have one show out against the sky. Just bring a little streak along there. I'm leaving dark values. I'm letting the lines create twists. Mm. See how that light edge turned the blade? Mm -hmm. We're going to turn the blade. Turn the blade, leave the blade. Not taking away all my dark values. Even sometimes coming back and with maybe a little more phthalo green so that there are right elements down low, and it also feels like there's different blades and layers of blades. You're like, but no stems. No, because I want to know where my flowers are before I put my stems in. Mm 
I'm going to get some more yellow into that. And then where necessary, more yellow and white. Mm. How beautiful. How calm. How completely perfect. I can come back into my yellow and green where I want to. Don't underestimate low, strong strokes. No strong strokes. Can I pull those forward? Mm -hmm. It creates a sense of dimensionality. Even here. Even down here. And you want to work this. I'm looking for thoughts to make sure. So what you know you're going to want is areas where there's highlights on the leaves. They're clearly getting sunlight. You find little spots. Little spots to, to accentuate. Look at this right here. It's a highlight right there. Yeah, little highlights. Bring them in. Bring them in. And put a few of them down low. Here and there. So that again, it feels like light is getting into the deep part. There we go. Time to heat my coffee again, I imagine, and mm. do the daffodils. Or, yeah, time to heat. Do the daffodils. So it, we're going to dry this and for two reasons. One, I want to plan out where my focal flowers are. And because I want to plan out where my little pea flowers are. So it needs to be dry so I can use a chalk tool to do that and show you guys where it is. So I'm going to dry it. You want, while I'm drying it, do you want to microwave my coffee? I've talked to them. You have talked to them. That's right, because we can't leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> On their own to think about things. <laughs> so, guys, <laughs> as you can see, coffee is an important part of your painting experience. And, well, the Sherpa is powered by coffee. So when we get back here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this the, the the thing there and we'll take a quick picture and I'll while well, I'll I'll run and drop off the coffee on the way to get the picture but really here's the thing this is what you need to know thoroughly dry this between the layers because the yellow can pick up the green in the next layers and it can make them muddy so make sure if you have any thick um leafy stuff or you know any of that you want to make sure it's thoroughly dry between the green and the yellow layers I'm assuming she's doing yellow layer next. She'd come back and maybe do something else that I'm not planning because I don't paint. I just push buttons and follow along. But just in case, what I'm saying is, yeah. Okay. Okay. Taking it away. <laughs> All right, so for the next part, we're going to make a strategy or a compositional plan. Your first day painting, you can do this too. And um, this is just something that you don't necessarily always get exposed to early on in your art journey, but I would like to introduce you to the idea now, which is that before you begin putting in major focal elements to your painting, make sure that where you think they are gonna go is where you're focusing your attention and putting out space and reserving thought for it, right? So basically what I mean is if you've got a plan, then you're not going to mess up. It's really that simple. 
But sometimes if you're trying to figure out how to load the brush and mix a color and do the brush stroke correctly and keep the cat out of the paint and, you know, keep, keep, you know, go make lunch for the kids or whatever you have going on in your life, right? Lots of things could be distracting you. The reason I say make a plan is so if there's a lot of stuff going on, you know where you're going, uh-huh. right? Kind of like Hansel and Gretel breadcrumbs, but nothing's going to eat it behind it, eat them behind us. So the first thing that we want to say is we have some focal daffodils. If this is the halfway point of our canvas, this is a credit color chalk pencil. I'm going to say that we're going to have a pretty focal daffodil that takes up this space right here. See that circle? And it's got a little ellipsy friend, a little bit low here, and then a partial showing ellipsy friend right here. So I know I've got this area that I, even though I have lots of leaves and everything going around them, I know that these are going to be here. I've got another really focused one up here, a little bit above my halfway line. And if you're having trouble finding the placement of these, um, hey baby, <laughs> see my nose. <laughs> On, if you check the description, there's a link to the website, there's a web page there. There's an image with measurements on it that match your 16 by 20 canvas to help you kind of, because you don't have, you wouldn't necessarily know this right off the bat, right? If you weren't using the traceable, um, you might not necessarily know this off the bat. And we know there's another real focal one right here. Just a little bit higher. Now, if you look at this though, there's five, which is nice compositionally, right? There's an uneven number, which our minds do like. And because of the scale of them, because they're going to be this big, well, we're really, really going to focus on these daffodils visually. And that's going to make the painting even more exciting than a photograph, which is kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. After we do that, let's put out a little red and yellow. So I'm going to use my CAD uh, yellow medium. And you, you might be like, is she going to use that, that weird Naples yellow light? No, I'm not going to use that for this. I think we're okay here. I think this is one that we can just do it with uh, these colors right here. I'm going to put out a little more white that's in a cleaner area, and I'm going to get myself fresh water. Okay. So this would be too dirty, and this would be too dirty. And then I'm going to sip coffee. And if you've got any questions before I start. Mm, let's see. If you don't, I'm still going to just sip coffee. Yeah. So it's co coffee. Coffee. Sip sip it. What I would say is our moderators are doing a really fantastic job of catching a lot of questions and making sure. Because sometimes, guys, when we ask questions that aren't necessarily pertaining to the, the lesson specifically, it's best for those to catch us on our website. And so. A lot of times we'll answer them in chat or, or directly to the web website if we if it's sort of too big to cover here. And, and that's one of the things I like about the live chat experience is you'll have painters who've been with me for hundreds of paintings so they know where stuff is. You have moderators and know our moderators are are many of whom are volunteers, right? They're they're volunteering their time for these shows or on Facebook and they are painters like you and they just have been here a minute and they love what we do and they want to help us do it. So uh, they're really here to help you. Like that's the heart space that they have going on right now. Everybody gives some love to our moderators for their hard, hard work. It's really quite a thing to do that and make sure you guys have everything. Um, if you have joined Emoji Club, you've got a poll going in the community tab about what I'm supposed to design next. So let's see here. This is a good question. Uh, Bernadine asks a great question that you can answer while you're doing your thing there. I'm sipping coffee. Why do our minds like odd number of objects in a painting, like five daffodils? Well, they, it's an interesting thing. They don't always like it. Sometimes symmetry and balance is preferable, but um, there has been a lot of studies done and a lot of looking into how we design and sort things, and we take great pleasure in asymmetry. Hmm. Just emotionally. It literally does, like... They've done scans where they show people different pictures and like their brain lights up with joy at certain stuff. And for sure, compositionally, it's interesting, right? Because it is unbalanced, right? This one being a forward facing, this one to the side, and this one more to the side, it's unbalanced. 
right? This in here, it's unbalanced. There's um, a miss thing, um, and I think I covered it in the original video, like the rule of thirds. It's really not a rule. It might even be kind of an urban myth, but it speaks to some true thoughts about design, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is that placement of objects inside of a surface greatly impacts how our eye rests here, right? By this series of daffodils kind of coming down and then us sweeping back up here, we're almost creating a visual figure eight that keeps the viewer on the canvas and doesn't send them away. You know, uh, because the different relationship of scale and size that's happening here. And we haven't even put in the little little happy background yellowy dot things yet that are going on. Hmm. It's going to be kind of nice. You're going to like it. I can't wait to see yours. Ooh. I really, really like my coffee. Uh, coffee's good. <laughs> Can you believe I've never had a coffee sponsor? You would think of any YouTuber yeah. ever in the universe, like coffee sponsors would be like, that chick, she's about what we make. No. No. And fear not, because I'm not actually looking for sponsors, so it's not that upsetting. <laughs> That's an important thing to also know. So I have my cad yellow, my cad red, and my titanium white. And I could mix up a bunch of paint and put those in two spaces. But it's a really good thing for you guys to learn how to mix as you go. Yeah. So you can make lots and lots of little small decisions in a painting. I'm going to take a little of my cad red, just a small amount, and I'm going to come over here. And this almost is a daffodil yellow because it's got a little bit of an orange to it. And I'm going to bring this around a few places in the painting they come here we're going to tuck in bits of yellow that might be peeking through right perhaps there's something down there little bits now, if you find that your yellow is not covering what is going on, you may need to paint things white first. Notice that I'm just making some little implications of what could be leaves or petals, but it's not. And that's because a lot of this is covered by other things. And that's how you're going to get that sense of distant flowers. And we want that. I might have to paint around a leaf or two. Look, see how that pushes that one back there? Mm -hmm. Let's put another little. We haven't gotten into everything. And when I come back through with the brighter orange, it's like, what? I know. I'm going to bring a little bit of a brush stroke right here. Curve it back up to here. When I go to put the uh, center in, that will help that one show up. I'm not making grass blades. Right now, it may look like grass blades a little bit. When we come put the centers in and some different directional petals, it will help kind of uh, alleviate that. Also, like this here, when we make those kinds of strokes. There's a little bit of tactical planning you've got to get into. It's not specifically hard. And, and you can always look at the references for that step to see where the brush strokes were and how they were shaped. 
I'm going to add a little more red to it. If you're very, very novice. This is a little hard for John on the filming. It, and it is a little hard for John on the filming. Sometimes. Sometimes. Putting little specific painted back areas, right? That makes sense once you think about it. You can, of course, paint these little marks and then paint grass around, but sometimes thinking about it hmm. will help you make compositional decisions that. Andy was asking, do you have a strategy for approaching your palette maintenance? Because um, it's so nice, neat, and tidy. Uh, <laughs> yes, actually. Um, I always come from the outside edge. Uh, and then create what's called a landing strip. Or maybe I just call it that. Anyways, <laughs> um, that's where I come to the edge of the paint and pull it out. And if I grab another bit of paint, I pull it out. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to load. If I come in the middle, I start to make a mess. Oh, yeah. And I'm not doing big, big, like I'm not going like big swirly areas. I do keep it kind of contained. So I do have a bit of a strategy. And then, you know, I wouldn't necessarily, unless I wanted to gray some yellow, put a purple right there. Sometimes I'm just trying to make sure that we've got... Believable things happening here. Let's call that a step. That's a lot to take in, and it's a bit mentally yeah. taxing. We're going to come back and um, put some orange on it, and I'll show you where those kind of go and how that goes in, and then we'll start moving forward to more and more focal pieces. And that's the thing, like, in anything... Take a breath, realize you're not under a time crunch. You're not in an art battle. This isn't an art rally race. There's no speed component other than maybe your kids are about to come in the room <laughs> right? or somebody's about to ask for some help or you've got to go to work. I mean, you might have life obligations, right, that could affect your time components in your painting. But with acrylic, you can just let it dry and come back. It'll be there for you when you're ready. So you don't have to put pressure on yourself and rush yourself through. That's not a necessary thing to do. Let's make the background stuff amazing. Amazing. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my red and yellow, and I'm going to make a very bright orange. See how bright that is? So bright. There we go. Right orange. Like right here. And I might, if, you, if you'll indulge me, turn my canvas to the side. Mm -hmm. This one I might see kind of specifically. So it can help me. I might keep it to the side for a second. <laughs> Making a little bell here. You can see those. You, in a little more detail, can help. Some of them are distant when you barely see it. See how we're just touching some out? A little bit in the distance.
not in focus. Not in detail. Mm -hmm. Maybe that one a little more in detail, but barely. Maybe this one is a little more in detail, but barely. So a little bit of orange there. Rinse out thoroughly. Now I'm going to pull out a little of my yellow and some of my white. Make a very light yellow. Very light. Add highlights to some of the yellow distant. See how that three values kind of gives you the sense that there's something happening there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can add a little more yellow to it, sometimes a little less. What you're trying to do is just say, even these objects in the far off distance, even these guys, they have shading, they have lighting, there's stuff happening. There we go. Let's call that a step. All right. Rinse out thoroughly. We've done pretty well. So now we have some to weigh little daffodils, right? Little, little kisses, little, little friends. This field is full of flowers, right? This field is full of joy. This field is full of life. You know, and when you do a field like this, you imply a world, don't you? You're a world builder. Because underneath the leaves, there are ants, there are worms in the dirt, there are little mice running around. Underneath the leaves is a whole ecosystem. When you paint a sky like this, there's a whole world that exists in this atmosphere. You paint more than the painting. You paint a world you can believe in, a world that you can live in mentally and emotionally. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to rinse out my brush, and I'm going to come here a little bit and say, this flower, mm. and he's like, got to cover up my cute leaves, but it happened, because he's going to live here, has a center, right? And he's got a petal, 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 and guess what? It's what? the opposite little peace sign of petals this way. So they layer kind of like that. And what that means is when I go to paint this and I'll go and get my middle range of yellow, if you remember where that is, a little bit of red, right? This petal right here, I would paint first. If your yellow is not covering, you may have to paint all of this white first, dry it, and then paint yellow over it. Mm. That'll help the yellow pop up. Yeah. Some yellows are very, very transparent and won't show. This yellow right here, this petal. We're going to just paint these purposefully. A little bit of red, not too much. This isn't the bright, bright orange. Right? And then this little fellow right here. Now 
That's what we're painting. All right. I can get a little white into my yellow here. I need to. Middle yellow. Not my brightest yellow. Not my darkest. That's pretty good. He's having a little moment there. Mm hmm Now, maybe also I had to take a little white and yellow. And I acknowledge that perhaps behind my petal, packed out a couple of places, and then I'll bring this back. We have to imply some flowers that are mm -hmm. a foot elsewhere. And I add a little white to that. Even though I know I'm going to come back and put really distinctive petals over these, it can help your flowers. Christian wanted me to pass along how much you uh, make her day and how she enjoys Thank painting you. along and bring you bring her joy every day when she paints with you. So I that, pass that along. Thank you so much. That is so nice to hear. These are petals that are behind this flower. And we're putting them in at this stage because this is the right stage to do it. Maybe a little more into the orange. All right. And then I've got this one here facing forward. We're kind of familiar with this. This is where its face is. So this petal is here. This petal kind of comes out short and straight that way. And this one comes down. Which means I'm going to, the under petal is here. It, I have to like actually find the under petals, right? These are the petals that are behind. It's just how the plant unfurls. So I've got to paint the plant like it wants to unfurl. Hmm. But if I do this, then when I layer it, Oh, darn it. That was the wrong one. It's okay. I can I can put it back in a minute. That one I didn't need to paint yet. It, this one is actually going to go on top, so I'm going to paint that one now. Sometimes I get a little lost in finding the three. Mm. Right? It can be a little challenging to find the three. This will end up being on top. Oh, I see. I just got the wrong one. And it, it is visually a, just a lot. And then I've got a little fellow here that's sort of definitely in focus. Put that back, and then I can put his petal back over sometimes let's put a little more orange into this or brown either one this is here perhaps here here and then we come back with a little more yellow over there let's push back a little bit mm. pretty good pretty good We know that's the center. We know this is the center. So this. 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 You see the three now? Yes. Okay. And then the pe the other petals go the opposite. Then it's then it's one down and two up, and then it's how they layer. It's kind of fun. Works every time. If I shorten a petal, 
it can be shortened because it's maybe in far perspective. That can be kind of fun to play with. Not too orange. And I've got this yellow over here so I can kind of get into it as well. And there's the wonderful center. So it's really about just connecting all these up. And then, you know, we get the next layer and centers on. Okay. So my inclination here would be to dry. And then kind of do some thoughtful work maybe on the petals back here. And my other inclination is I'm going to leave these two more in clear blue sky because I want them to be the focus of what I'm doing. Okay. Hmm. Just make sure you thoroughly dry those layers. Get all that in there. And you can see that it may take a couple layers. If you're doing, um, if you're using student or craft paint, you may have to paint the flowers in with white paint first, then paint the yellow over the top of it. That's a, or do a couple layers of yellow just to get those in there. But uh, thoroughly dry between those layers. That'll help make sure that they, uh, uh, they all go, all lay down nicely. Like they do. Like they do. Like they do. All right. I can rinse out. I'm still good. I'm going to come. I'll bring some of my yellow over here. Just a little bit of mid-range yellow. Bring my yellow over here. No reason to waste it. It's cadmium. Mm. You see it's a little brighter yellow that I'm coming over. This one was going to be forward. So since I remember that, I'll keep that there. I'm not going to brighten this one. Or this one as much because it's behind. Just bringing that next layer of brighter yellow over it. Not totally a dry brush, but it's okay when some of the color that's underneath shows through a little bit. And then as a last touch, I'm going to get a little white and yellow. Make that light color, if you'll remember. We're going to put that a few places, okay? Maybe like right there on that petal. Not the whole petal. Maybe a little more on that one. And then I'm going to come to the top of this one. Because I'm talking about where there's maybe some light on the flower. I know it's a lot for John to keep up with on the pedals, but it's just, uh, he's willing to do it for you. We do it. He does it because he cares. Maybe a little bit of white there. 
I don't feel like we'll have, I think that's the highlights that we're going to have there. So let's call that this step. And guys, I don't want you to worry about um, the chalk because if I take a clean brush and water and I didn't press real hard, you can see it'll come right back up. So don't, don't stress on that. That isn't going to be the most stressful thing we have going on there. Isn't this fun so far? So you've got your back pedals. They've got a couple values on them. We're going to dry this, photograph this as a step, come back and put the next level of player, foot pedals on. Okay, so I'm double checking here. Oops. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, make sure you're thoroughly dry. Again, just uh, doing all of that. Uh, getting through you're know, making sure that when you put your layer on you thoroughly dry it so that the next layer will layer properly and you won't lift paint and you won't do all that kind of stuff so that's what I was trying to uh, uh, what I was trying to say and I'll try to keep the reference up there and keep things going and stuff so, oh, yeah. oh. Do a coffee break in photograph, and I'll and make tell you it. Do you want to do that? Yeah, why don't we take a quick coffee break? We're going to take a quick coffee break. You stretch, move your back, move your head. If you've been sitting for a long period of time hunched over, make sure that you are straightening your spine and taking care of your health, as is, but with the advice of a doctor and all the safety things that you're supposed to think of. But um, my point is, it's important to move every once in a while, especially if you're sitting. Here. And we'll do a coffee break, and then we'll come right back and finish the painting. Oh, um. Or we I'll won't do a coffee break. We don't have the coffee break one, but I have a different, I have, we have a, we could take, we could take the, the waterfall break. We should, so. Okay, that'll work. It's long that'll enough work. to make a cup of coffee. You That's get right. this one today. Right. We will be right, right back. back. I see. and blue bay hand in hand slept there for days like wind grey eye to eye we parted ways meet me under Stepped hard shells, shallow as sparks in deep wells. Help me catch my breath, forgetting higher. Imagining your face, you're my desire.
Hey guys. All right. So Cinnamon is just wrapping up the coffee in the next room, and we're going to take a quick take look over here at what she has been doing while we're away. So one of the things that folks were wanting to say here is asking, do we have the uh, uh, the picture in picture? And we'll keep that up here in frame reference so as best we can throughout this. But I wanted to make sure we had a quick chance to take a quick look over here at some of these flowers before we moved on. You can see a couple of layers there really make a big difference as you're doing that. So, okay, now here comes Cinnamon now. She's going to join us. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. There she is. Dun -dun. Now, I want to put up the step here for us. Okay. And you can tell us what we're going to be doing now. Can next. we photograph it? I'm going to right here. Okay. So, in the next step, in step 10, we're going to be adding the <sighs> next three petals on the daffodils. Once you see this daffodil construction, you'll never be able to unsee it. <laughs> and you'll be able to paint them on everything. So, you could paint them on your fence. You know those really cool fences that are all painted with flowers? You could just do it with daffodils instead of poppies if poppies were not your thing. So this is a good skill. It will translate off the canvas. It will translate into other art projects in your life. Plus, this is going to be a gorgeous painting on your wall. Win-win, win-win, win-win. Win all the way around, isn't it, John? Okay. Now, I mentioned that we can take a damp brush, right, and remove chalk which is absolutely true. And hopefully, even without those visual lines, you're starting to see kind of some directionality that's going on with the daffodils. Okay. So now it is the opposite. The next two petals come this way and this one, and they're over the top. So they can be more yellow, they can be brighter. And because of the placement of them, it will put them more forward over the petals we just put in. Let's put out a little more yellow. Okay. Let's continue to sip our hard won coffee, which I'm sure <laughs> gave my husband a heart attack. He's like, he's like, one minute. I'm like, they'll get it. They'll understand. They know I'm making coffee. <laughs> All right, let's start here. I'm going to be using a brighter yellow, maybe a little white into my yellow this time. Not so much of the orange at this point. And we're going to make a similarly sized petal to this mm. one. On top. Little white, not the lightest white, not the bright sun reflected white, just a little white into our yellow. And again, if you're having a terrible, terrible time with this, remember you can paint things white first. Sometimes student paint. Um, gets the cost down by lowering the pigment and quality of the paint. And it can mean that you have to do a couple layers. It's not a big deal. You just have to know it's a thing. I'm going to bring one right over here. This is the same even if you want to do a ruffled daffodil, you would just ruffle the edge of the petal. Hmm. Don't ruffle my daffodils. Don't ruffle them. And since these have centers, and the direction of the center lets us really know what direction the flower is facing. It's pretty chill all the way around. And I'm going to put an orange center right here and maybe like a little bit here later. So that's going to be nice as well. So this will feel like a more solid cluster of daffodils. And then we'll have these clear ones, which will make them more focal. How is everyone doing with their daffodils today? Very good. I cannot wait to see everybody's paintings because I feel like, could be wrong, but I feel like they're going to do amazing. Now, I may paint this one's petals first because I need the others to layer over it. Mm. And that's okay. And then I'll come back in with its face and it'll be all right. This is just a layering choice. Now I can do this one. And we, we accidentally put this one in, if you'll remember. Yep. So that's why you layer that way. Just knowing how even the paint being a certain direction to layer it. A lot of this will get covered right now.
We're going to have to talk to the munchkins about live rules. Mm. <laughs> I can tell. It's going to be a convo. Okay. So can you see how that's layering in and the value and everything is giving us some, this is before we line, this is before we shade, this is before we detail anything. Already we have positioning of petals. Tough business to get, truly. Right. This, one's, uh, this one might come a little bit to the back side here. And the way we'll make these shortened petals make sense is that the face will be a little bit this way. Hmm. So that's how you kind of shift the face of your daffodil. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. It works really well. And this will be like a really gorgeous graphic piece, kind of like a uh, spring mountain, but with less difficulty. <laughs> right. A uh, little less hard than spring mountain was um, for the results at home. Okay. And again, we do the opposite, right? If you remember, if it's uh, if it's facing this way, then that petal would come in like that. Mm -hmm. You would have this one here, much more yellow. There we go. Kind of working that one there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to dry it and we'll come add some details and that is going to be a step. Okay. And as I said, it's going to be important to make sure you do these drying steps between there because it, it just makes sure that you, that there's that distinct layer and uh, that adds the complexity, especially to these yellows. And you may find that you, it, if you're, again, if you're using a student paint or a craft paint, it may take more than one coat, or you may have to add a coat of um, white to help with that, but it's no big deal if you have to add an extra layer. Just make sure you dry between them. So let's add some highlights from the sun on that, which you guys probably know by now is a very light yellow with white. Very light yellow with white. You decided to just add another little layer to it. Yeah, we're adding another little layer, more white. These are kind of like the sun is really hitting it. Mm -hmm. It's much lighter there. Um, on this downward petal, maybe I'll do another yellow, maybe not as white because we're just trying to give these some depth. You can see where suddenly these petals have personality. That's what you're trying to get. There we go. Wow. That like really that. just made them all pop up. Just made them all pop up. Let's try it. Okay. Try. <laughs> okay. The trick is just to drive between the layers to make sure that you're getting those layers nice and, you know, dry so that when you put the next layer on there, it pops up. Pop up. That's the thing. I don't know. I feel like I've said that a couple times now. You know what else I could say? Thank you for being here. Because we like being here. We like doing this. And we couldn't do this without you guys being here. So that's the beginning. Thank you guys for being here. Okay. You photograph this and then we'll I do can. another step. And I'm going to sip my coffee. We're going to step it. We're going to step it. Step it. Step it up. Mm, mm, mm. Step it up. Mm, mm, mm. Sorry, I'm a weird person.
I'm a good art teacher, but I'm a weird person. So uh, hopefully by now, you're kind of getting a sense of your paint. You may be discovering at this moment that the paint that you have is not highly pigmented and you need to do things like paint an area white first, allow that to dry, and then paint your thin color over it. What you need to realize is whether it's craft paint or student paint, you have real paint. Every paint has a personality or a nature. Um, your, your acrylic is real, your real artist, everything is real. You just have to make strategies for the materials that you have, right? Sometimes where we live, there, we don't have access to a lot of art material, right? There are art store deserts. They're it's, true. It's not as serious as, say, a food desert, which is a very serious humanitarian crisis, right? But there are art store deserts, and it can be very challenging to get art materials, and it can be super expensive to get them online, depending on where you live. And you might not have access to anything I'm using. So what I want to tell you is there is a way for you to do this, but you've got to get to know your art materials. Mm-hmm. And then you, then you make plans and strategies to work around where they might have weaknesses. That's what I would do. If I was in an area and I could only get very unpigmented paints, I would just make a strategy. Strategize around that. I'm going to switch to a round brush. Yeah? Yeah. It's round, round brush time. <laughs> And I'm going to put out a little block, if I can find it. There it is. Yeah? Yeah. Which black is that? That is Mars black. Mm. So right now on the palette, I have phthalo blue, titanium white, cad yellow, phthalo green, burnt sienna, Mars black, some more titanium white, a little cad red medium over here, and a little more cad yellow. That's where we're at. This first one, I'm going to get some just real red, maybe just some real like like yellow and a little red, but it's, it's real, real bright what it is. Right. I've reserved some bright red, but for sure I've got that. And this part, I'm going to just wiggle a little line around. See that? Just paint that whole center in with the orange you have. We have other colors we're going to do, but this is the beginning. While we're here, right, while we're, while we're here, we're going to want to add some tuck in some little orange bits, right? Definitely want to have a little orange coming out here. Can you do an even darker version of it? Paint around that petal in between these pretty carefully. That's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now this one's interesting because it has an opening here and it's kind of to the side. I will paint it solid and then later using values change the direction of this opening on the far side. Okay? Mm-hmm. So it'll come out a little bit straight and it'll go wiggle, 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 wiggle. Paint this right now this way. This one is very exaggerated. And I just want to make sure that my far edge is a little wiggled. See how we did? Mm -hmm. So forward, side, side. Okay. This little fellow here is a bit side facing, but it's going to be all about the center. So I am going to do this. 
it's going to be about where we put that center. That's something that can be hard to know. Like, how do I paint something that's facing directly at me and it has a very thin edge and your head kind of gets wrapped up in it and you sort of miss the solution that was there all along. Similar deal here. All right, not too bad. While this is having a dry, rinse out pretty thoroughly. And you're going to get your green and your burnt sienna. You can even grab a little of your Mars black into it. You want a very dark color. You're going to paint a distinctive stem. Coming down and tucking into the grass below. Hmm, that's nice. Yeah. Should be a pretty thin line. Try to keep your brush pressure light to get it. All right. You could say that this leaf was there, but you know what I if I do a if I do a cool thing, I go like this. I can put that leaf in front of that daffodil, which is sort of interesting oh, yeah. and keeps it from being the stem. There we go. Little stem there. Stems happen. And letting ourselves paint those stems specifically can allow for some really fun elements in our painting. The stems hold the flowers. The stems hold the flowers. I don't want it on the petal. You just erased it with your finger. I did. I'll tuck that behind that leaf right there. I've got some stems there. I'm not going to worry too much about what's behind it. You could, but I feel like design-wise, it's not a good time. I'm still allowing my orange to dry. I'm going to come over here to my green and, and yellow. Make a nice light value. We're just shading the stems, okay? So that they look like they're part of what we already painted. And if I want to, I rinse out and come right into the phthalo green, powerful color. Make sure I don't have any hidden drops on my round brush because you know they like to carry those. Hidden drops of paint or water come in and mess up our canvas, right? Mm 
and get some white into it and get that very light green that just pops, right? And shade your stems. Give a highlight to them so that they pop out and are distinctly connected to the flower. It just helps them feel like they're part of the composition. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is just making sure that these explanation structures look like they're part of the composition. You're also giving your orange a chance to dry. Hmm. If it's dry, you can take this moment. I think it's a good idea to put in maybe a little more yellow okay, where we need it. And come here and add a little more orange than that. Okay, leaving a little kind of ripple edge, right? Good, good, good. Kind of putting it on the lips there, isn't it? Yeah. Of that yellow. Little lips. Remember I said this one had a thing? So, come around here. When you put the brown in, that will help it show. Mm -hmm. And this one, interestingly enough, kind of the opposite little direction. I'm going to take a little of my red and yellow and brown. And I'm going to kind of add mm. a tuck of what would be the deep center. This one almost doesn't have one. This one has one over there. When those three are in, I'm going to add a little black to that mix. Not pure black, though, is it? It's that orange and brown and black. And that's important because that starts to tell us a little bit about the shape of things. It really does. Right? Now that we know a little bit about the shape of things, go ahead and dry it, and we'll call this a step because the next one we're going to make them pop. Ooh. And they're already pretty poppy. They are pretty poppy. Very poppy for daffodils. Da da da. My dad jokes. My daughter says I'm made of dad jokes. I think I think that's quite a compliment. So, if you'd like to hear more dad jokes, don't forget to click subscribe in the thing down below. But seriously, if you'd like to get notifications when we go live and be part of the Sherpa notification, then just click uh, send the message, the Art Sherpa, all one word, to the number 33222 and you will be notified when we go live. Isn't that neat? Yes. Super neatish. Neatish.
It's on, it's on the neat scale. That's neat like. Neat, neat like. Step 12. Isn't that great? Look at that go. And we haven't even made, when we put it together, it's going to look like, boom, so graphic. You're going to be like, I cannot believe I painted that. The thing about being a beginner to art is not that you have to have some magical talent that's hidden inside of you that you didn't know about. That's not what we're here trying to, to discover. The thing about art is there's a bunch of skills to learn. And then once you understand those skills, you can put them together to create paintings. You don't know how many layers are involved in a painting right now if you're new. So when you go to do a painting, you know, you might do a painting that's a crazy hot mess because of what you don't know and think that you're not good at art because of it. And you would be wrong. Totally. You would have misattributed what was happening to the moment. So knowing these layers, that's what's so important. As you learn the skills, right, and you build up a bunch of art skills and you start to create original work, it is your life story, the experiences that you've had, the person you are, your bright self, your shadow self, your good experiences, your bad experiences that come together with your art skills that create what we like to talk about as voice and talent. Mm. Sometimes when we say someone's really talented, it's because they put a lot of skills together with a lot of stuff and they have a lot to say and we relate to it. That's what's happening. Okay. Now. Now. I'm going to get my cad red on my brush. Are you? On the toe of my number four round. That makes that just, you're sort of gilding the daffodil. Gilding the daffodil. Always gild the lily. <laughs> but this is not a lily, it's a daffodil. It is a daffodil. And always gild the daffodil. Wiggling that line. You didn't even know you had this flower in you. You didn't even know it was deep down inside. But then something began to grow. Mm. And a Disney song took over. And now you're painting more than this provincial life. Don't claim me. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, good times, good times. Yeah. And take a little yellow, and it can even have a little white in it. And I'll bring some details. Into this moment. Little highlight right there. Little highlight right into where that petal might be. How much is everybody freaking out at this moment? I love it. Oh, man. Let's get an even brighter one right here. Where it needs a touch up, just touch up. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You'll never be sorry mm -mm. that you took the time. Everyone thinks these are just really beautifully coming together. A little bit of just black in a couple of places. Notice how, how light and careful I am with that, though. 
You're going to want to step back and take that in. Ah. You've got some nice shape in there, right? Mm -hmm. Nice shape. Good stuff. Let's get back into your bright orange right here. Kind of loosely mixed. And add a touch of something that could be in the center of that. I'm going to grab just a little bit of this. Make sure that that has a bit of shading there. Needs a little more shading. You didn't know, did you? The daffodils were this delightful to paint in the bright sunlight. Now, we could be done here. I would say most of YouTube would say, good job. We have one more step that I think is going to pop it to the next level. Could be wrong, could be right. Why don't we find out? We'll call it a step. A I'll step. be right back. Okay. Let's see here. Shh. Where are you going? No, you can step. Okay. I'm going to drink coffee. All right. You're step like, 13. You're like, oh, you know how? I thought we were going to come up with a new step inside 13. But we'll call it 13, and we'll just hope the universe appreciates the effort that we're putting out there and doesn't get me. Huh? Ah, I'm one of those people where I like to see numbers up there. I'm like, oh, it's all the same number. <laughs> Repeating numbers. So in the flowers, you could go a lot of different directions. You could do a very dark outline around all the petals, and that would help them pop. Um, that's not really my sensibility. And nothing wrong with the different ways that you could do this. I do want just a little more definition on the focal flowers. And I'm going to do that by taking white paint. Now, I'll use this white paint just for, you know, convenience. This is titanium white golden fluid acrylic. And the reason why I do this instead of just thinning this down is I want a lot of pigment in it. Mm -hmm. That's all this. Okay. Nothing, nothing super serious. And I don't even need to get into a special brush. I'm going to just take a little bit of white on the toe of this. Mm. And I'm going to outline. The glinting of the sun. No, the pet, well, it could be. I'm going to just create hard edges around these focal little flowers right here. Pull them forward from the back of the canvas. This is like, you could, again, you could do this with a dark color. If you wanted like a strong and shocking contrast. But what I find is, is that sometimes white lining, especially on something bright like this, keeps the picture from getting super dark. Mm -hmm. It's got an interesting subtlety to it that I like. Yeah, it, it does. It has like, it does have an interesting little... Ooh, if you get too much yellow, the thing is, it's really nice. You can come back and be like, no, 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 no. I mean, too much white, you can fix it with your yellow. So if it gets away from you, which it can. Those lines, those definitions. That, like when you get away from it, really, really yeah. makes that difference. And, and, and because we're only doing it on our five, the five, <laughs> <laughs> because we're only doing it on the five, it will help those really show up for us. It will also help pull the petals apart and create value differences without darkening the flowers. Hmm. That makes sense. Something to do. I like the way that these two are kind of layered forward and back on each other. Mm -hmm. That's that's sort of the way that flowers are in the garden. Weird little moments like that. I'm not heavy handed with this. This isn't a heavy, heavy line. Right. It's just just enough of a one 
to give our flowers contrast and let them kind of pop, 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 pop. Just little lines on each flower. Mm -hmm. You can even come in and sort of exaggerate maybe some of your highlighted areas in the centers if you want. Exaggeration is completely allowed. And you can kind of turn a forward face like a fold of the petal. Oh, wow. You can do that. I might be a little lighter on the petals that are behind there. And that little white highlight there. Look at that pop. That's amazing. Pop, pop, pop. And you can see what I mean. Like this would be great on a ruffled. Mm -hmm. You were doing ruffled daffodils are a lot of fun and yes this whole process works on tulips too all the happy spring flowers it's funny that uh one of my favorite songs is called daffodils really by yeah which one is it it's it's um it's by mark ronson remember he gets that song that's kind of got that um very uh, kind of 70s groove beat to it. Look at that go. Aren't they bright in the garden now? Mm -hmm. Don't they hold our attention? And they say, I'm so pretty. And look at how we layered the stems and the grass. So you can layer things. Turned out so nice. It can just turn out so nice. We can do anything in art. It's in us. In you. A wonderful day. Fold that petal or eh, I don't want to fold it. Now, as you get back away from this, the strength of that white really blends into the yellow. Yeah, because there's such a similar value. Yellow and white are a similar value. And so there's really, if you want to get contrast and you don't want to darken the flowers. Yeah. You got to go, you got to go light. So the difference is really interesting. Well, I don't really have anything else to say about this. I think we got there, guys. Yeah. I think we did. I think we painted a really great painting and I'm excited about putting this uh, step by step PDF together actually. Do, do we do we need to <sighs> step it and then let you sign it? Do I feel better? Yeah. Yeah. Can we do that? We can do this that. Look, weird. so we're gonna call this I'm gonna knock on wood. <laughs> we're gonna call this a step. Throw some salt <laughs> and give it another step. I don't actually think the universe is punitive. I don't. I just Why? also Yeah. <laughs> Why find out, right? Like, I would move by, I'm going to be honest, I would move my floor. If I were on the 13th floor, even if I was with that friend who was, like, super scientific and wanted you to, like, explain yourself by facts, right? By the way, if you have that friend who's super scientific and wants to explain yourself by facts, this is the answer. So what, what I'm going to say I have highly triggered anxiety, and if I stay on this floor, I'm going to keep you up all night. And then they're going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, we can go down to another floor. So I Don't try to, like, explain it to them. Don't. I'm Just married. Like, I have anxiety and I'm going to go down to the next floor or you're going to be up all with me going, are we okay? Are we okay? Are we okay? Yeah, see, I married her and she won't sleep on the 13th floor. She won't do all those things. So I know. I don't I get off the elevator. knew in advance that this was like. So, all right, in the step. Actually, on large buildings, I want to be on the third floor or lower because anything higher, you can't get out of the high rise if there's a fire. So on this fun fact. <laughs> so on this step, <laughs> I'm gonna sign it. <laughs> that's what this step is all about. It's about getting the signature. 
I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and my white that I had here, this fluid white, and make a very light color that will mm. show up, but um, be still a color. I don't want to do white down here. This will be like pretty bright as it is, and I might. Step. <laughs> oh my gosh. This uh, if so you've ever cringe. done my fuzzy bee, feel free to add some fuzzy bees to this because I think that they would just be delightful on here. Mm -hmm. I had the force with me, didn't I? You did. So my wish for you, hopefully, I said at the beginning of this, if you're still here with me, I said at the beginning of this it was my intention to create a lesson that was the one that you were hoping to get on YouTube about daffodils, that you were getting a painting that you felt great about, that you could put on your wall, that your friends were going to be like, oh my gosh, you're so good at painting. That's, I mean, like, <laughs> that's, that's my friends. So All my friends talk like that. Oh my gosh, you're so good at painting. <laughs> They're all from Southern California. All my friends are so from California, and it's so true. But this painting turned out to be I love my so art. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I really like how the daffodils turned out. I can't, I can't say how much I enjoyed them. It was just a delightful day. I happen to know our moderator, Cad Yellow, is probably squealing, 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 squealing in her chair right now because yellow is her favorite color, if you didn't guess by the name mm. that she totally needed. She was like, I have to be yellow. <laughs> Anything else for you in the world, but I gotta be yellow. <sighs> Guys, this was a great day, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you for spending time with me. Your, your trust in me to take you through these paintings, it's a huge deal. If you would like to be notified of when more lessons are coming up, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit all notifications. Um, that way YouTube tells you when something's happening. Sign up for a text notification. And bet between now and when I see you again, which is to, oh, I, um, Tuesday. I'll see you Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Until then, be good to yourself, be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye! <laughs>